I bet you can hear me now. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. I completely, uh, I completely forgot to turn on my microphone. So as I was saying, this is going to... Okay. Um, thank you, Isabel, and thank you, Rosa, for telling me. This, as I was saying, this is the first time that uh, I have the chat, which is very good because... I would have done the entire thing without hearing or without speaking to anybody. You wouldn't have heard anything. Oh, geez. Right. Okay. Well, that actually relaxes me now. I got the worst of it out of the way and now we can get started. I can back up again. I can say what I was saying before. Um, well, as I was saying, I don't want to stop uh, helping you prepare for the exam. And I certainly don't want uh, you to feel that uh, here at the Academy, we're just kind of kicking our feet up and uh, enjoying our time, our staycations, okay? Um, in fact, as I was saying about the exam, um, I can't say for 100%, but 99% uh, uh, likely that the exams are going to be postponed. They're not going to be on the, on the day that, that, that we were told. However, I can't say because we have to get word from the exam center and the exam center has to get word from Cambridge because this is... Um, this is not a decision that only affects us here in um, in Valencia or even in Spain. It's all over the world because these exams are done sort of like at the same time in all over the world. Yeah. Okay. And Cambridge has it very well controlled. And when they let uh, the exam center know, the exam center will tell us and then we will tell you. So if you've signed up for an exam, hold tight. Don't fret. There are a lot of people worried about this and a lot of people who are going to um, who are going to take action to get this uh, sorted out. Um, my intention with this uh, with these videos is that I want to basically continue with um, talking about the different parts of the exam. I want to talk about different vocabulary and different grammar that's going to come up uh, that often comes up on the exam. And this just gives you sort of once a week to have an excuse to listen to English, um, dive a little bit more in depth with uh, the English. It's not just watching a series or just watching a, a movie, which are excellent. But this, we're going to an analyze the language a little bit uh, more than simply uh, consume it and enjoy it. Um, I do want it to be an interactive session. My intention is that we, or I at least, will go for two hours. That's my slotted time. And um, I need you to get ready to type. I need you to get ready to interact and, and sort of learn with me. And we can, um, we can, we can get through this. <laughs> I'm super nervous now that I completely botched the beginning. But anyway, okay, we'll go on. Um, so I'm not a professional YouTuber, but we'll get on with it. All right, so in my grand sort of layout here, I've got different computer screens and different things going on. And my learning curve is like this. So I, um, you may see me look one way or the other. Uh, that's me just trying to figure out what's happening. Okay, great. Um, now... Today, I want to look at the uh, preliminary exam, B1, and first certificate. We mentioned that. Yes, of course. Uh, let's see. Phrasal verbs. These are our friends. Our friends, the phrasal verbs, right? Um, there are a lot of phrasal verbs in the English language. Um, they, they roll off our tongue. We never study phrasal verbs as native English speakers. Um, it's, not, it's not part of English class. Uh, we learn about syntax and we learn about writing skills and we learn about the grammar, but we don't learn about vocabulary per se. I mean, vocabulary is something that everybody does all the time in their language, um, but it's not like learning a second language, okay? Phrasal verbs at the B1 and B2 level. Now, this is when um, you're expected to know 
quite a few phrasal verbs, certainly at the B2 level and most definitely at the C1 level. The C1 level, they should be rolling off your tongue like a native. Like a native. Of course, you'll always come up uh, against one or two that you've never heard before, but um, that's the point. I mean, that's learning, right? So let's take a look. Today, we're going to look at uh, the verbs come, bring, and take. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take you through, see what I did there? Take through, all right. I'm not gonna, you see what I did there? Now you can see me, you see what I did there? Take you through. I'm not gonna take you through every single phrasal verb that exists in the, in the English language with come, break, and take, uh, come, bring, and take. We're gonna look at six uh, participles for uh, each one. They're gonna be the same participles and you can see how the ideas in some of these are the same uh, or at least similar. So the idea of on, the idea of off, one is sort of more of a, an affirmative type of feeling, an on feeling, an up feeling, like down and off are more like a negative feeling. Okay, so these carry through an in and out and all right, all of these um, carry through with the different verbs even though the definitions or the meanings are going to change. So um, as you can see here, we're looking here, uh, we've got take, come, and bring. And these are all the participles that we can use with them. Yeah, take up, take for, take in, take off, take on, take out, take over, take through, take over. Oops, I repeated take over. Brilliant. Take back, take down, take after, take apart. Take against, take away, take upon, take up on, sorry, not take upon, take up on and take up with. I mean, that's a lot. That is a lot to take in. Yeah, okay, take in. You see, I did that again. That's a lot to take in. Um, the same goes for come and for bring. Come about, bring about. Come back, come along, come away, come across. You can read these, okay? Um, what I want you to do uh, at home, uh, especially the ones that my students who are uh, getting ready to take the exam, you know, you should have a pen and paper or a pencil and paper and get ready to write down the ones that are new or that have presented problems to you. Okay, it's no use to just sit and listen to me ramble on and make mistakes and kind of make a fool of myself sometimes. But um, you have to take an active part in learning this vocabulary, okay? And part of that active learning is putting it into use. And that's why I want you to use the uh, chat, uh, the chat feature in this, in this stream to, to test out, to ask questions if you have doubts or if I said something that you're sort of, uh, is that true? I, I don't remember that being true. Uh, Bradford, I think you made a mistake. Fine, let me know. Okay, um, I may misspeak. Um, so, with that said, I want to I want to move on, and we're going to start with take. Hello, Sergio. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we're going to start with take, and the six participles that we're going to uh, use or have a look at today are down. So take down take through, take back, take in, take over, and take up, okay? And we're gonna start with take up. And I'm sure that there are some uh, phrasal verbs that uh, you already know, take up, take down, take in. Um, but I'm gonna go more in depth. And not only are you going to know what is the most uh, common use, for example, to take up. Everybody knows that you take up a new hobby, or at least at this level, you should know that to take up a new hobby um, means to start a new hobby, right? Um, but I want to go, oops, darn it. You see, that's what happens when I don't pay attention. Okay, there. <laughs> so I want to go a little bit more in depth and I want to ask or offer another meaning, take up, again, to occupy space. Take up on to accept an offer, okay? Or to take up with to talk to someone about an issue or a topic or a problem that you might have. So we've got the phrasal verb take up with all of those participles, remember. 
and now we've got take up, and in take up there are four different meanings. This is, this is not very easy stuff from an ESL point of view, from English as a second language. But when you're reading the exam, when you're reading the exam and you have to do a gap fill or there's a space or your multiple choice and you have to choose, yeah, come, bring, take, uh, get, for example, you have to know which one fits and and not only the the participle is going to give you a clue, but you have to think about the whole meaning, okay? Um, remember, phrasal verbs are not meant to be dissected. You can't translate one word and then translate the other word and have it mean something. These go together as a meaning, even though the words are separated, okay? Um, so let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at take up and what we can learn from take up. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. So we know to take up to start a new hobby or a new activity. I took up painting. I took up painting because I couldn't leave my house for three weeks. Well, it's only been two weeks, not even. Has it been two weeks? A week and a half? Well, one week for Fayas here in Valencia. And now, yeah, it's so it's been almost two weeks. Have you taken up any new hobby, any new interest since you've been at home? Hello, Mr. Barat. Have you taken up any interest uh, or taken up any new hobby now that you're stuck in your house and you've got nowhere to go? Anybody take up painting? Anybody take up sewing, artistry? Write in the comments, okay? Not in the comments, in the chat. Tell me what you've taken up because you have been sort of locked in your home. Yeah? Let's see what, what people have taken up. I'd like to hear from you. Anybody at all? I mean, I've taken up um, a couple of things. First off, <laughs> I took up I took up learning how to do this. All right? Uh, it's not easy, but it's I took up uh, um, painting. All right, very good, Rosa. Painting. You should bring in a painting when we resume classes. I'd like to see that. Anybody take up anything since you're stuck at home? Uh, I took up learning about technology and setting up a web page and setting up a YouTube station or channel and how to do all of this stuff. I had no idea. So I took up learning about this. Um, I've also taken up woodworking. I, well, not woodworking. I'm not really doing it. I'm like building things. I'm trying to build things with wood. So I'm teaching myself about that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Rosa, you're not going to bring me anything. Okay, fine. Well, uh, anybody else take up anything? I know, Isabel, you never stopped doing things. So you, uh, you have to be doing something. No? All right. Well, I'll move on and we'll uh, we'll see if maybe some people can catch up and tell us what they've taken up these past couple of weeks or what you want to take up. Maybe you want to take up something. Yeah, in the next month and a half that they're going to keep us like this. A month and a half. We'll see. Let's move on. Let's see what we got. We can take up space. All right. Take up space. So my computer is too big. It takes up my whole desk. It takes up my whole desk. All right. I don't want to take up all of the space uh, on the sofa. So I will not lie down. I will sit up so I don't have to take it. So I don't take up all of the space. All right. Take up. Another one for I You have to remember the. OK. Another one for take up. To take up on. So what we do now, this one, look very carefully here. Where's my pointer? I've lost my pointer. There he is. Okay. So here we've got the, the grammar of it. Here is quite important. Yeah. You take someone up on some offer. Okay, so they say, hey, do you want to come to lunch? No, no, thank you. 
I'm, you don't take that person up on lunch. Hey, do you want to come bowling? Yeah, that sounds awesome. You take that person up on bowling. Okay, so you go bowling. She took her teacher up on doing some extra assignments for a better mark. She took her teacher up on doing some extra assignments. I'll take you up on that. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do. I'll take your suggestion. I'll take your suggestion. She took her teacher up on doing some extra assignments for a better. Uh, great. Sacha is playing parchees. Awesome. Can you take up parchees? I guess you can. Sure, why not? All right. If uh, if anything happens to the stream, you you can let me know as well because I have no idea what it looks like at home, honestly. Okay. Take up. You take up with. So when you take something up with someone, now look here, we did it back, not backwards, we did it the other way around. You take something up with someone, whereas before we took someone up on something, it's, it's not easy, yeah? You talk to that someone about the issue, yeah? It's not my rule. You have to take it up with your father. You have to talk with your father about this rule. It's not my rule. You have to take it up with the doctor. You have to take it up with your boss. You have to take it up with your teacher. Okay? Take whatever your problem is, the it, take it up with that person. Who do you take it up with at home when... Hmm. Who do you take it up with when you have a problem at home? You usually take up your problems with your mom or your dad or with anybody. Who do you take up your problems with? Hmm. When I have a problem, I usually take it up with, uh, with my girlfriend. Yeah. If I have a problem, I'll take it up with her and uh, we'll talk about it. Both. That's good. All right. Ah, an app. So I'm just playing an app of Parcheese. Okay. Well, English and Parcheese. Of course, it's the perfect combination. It's like cheese and par. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's go. We're going to go to take through. Take through. So we did take up. We're going to go take through. Take someone through something. Take someone through something. When you take someone through something, you are going to explain step by step a process. All right, I'll take you, I'm taking you, actually right now I'm taking you through some phrasal verbs. I'm taking you through some phrasal verbs. We're going through this very carefully and very slowly. I'm taking you through phrasal verbs. Um, if you don't understand maths, who takes you through the homework? Who takes you through those, those problems that you have to do? Do you go online and then YouTube takes you through it or some online mathematician? All right. Who takes you through the difficult process? My dad took me through how to create my own web page with WordPress. All right. He took me through it. He showed me how to create an account. He showed me how to uh, begin uh, editing, well, adding content. He showed me how to put in some images and to put in some different things, very basic stuff. But he took me through it step by step. He took me through it step by step. Now, when you see the participle, and this is, goes for the exam, when you see the participles, okay, you can, you, you really can't, automatically assume the verb. Remember what I said, you have to listen, I'm sorry, listen, you have to read in the context of what's going on because take through and come through and bring through are not the same, okay? They're not the same and that's kind of what we're doing. So with through, we just got the one. We just got the one uh, verb. I can't find my, there we go. Now we're gonna go and to take over. I'm sure that take over, 
I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put this out there right now before we move into takeover. Who can tell me one definition very quickly of takeover? Asterisk, estrella, estrellita. <laughs> no dictionary, no looking up on the internet. Who can tell me a very quick definition of takeover? First one in the in the comments. Let's see what we got. Take over. What does it mean to take something over? To take something over. Uh, let's see if I can. Boop. Take something over. Hmm. What does it mean to take over? You know, we got 14, 14 people are watching. There must be somebody. Ooh. Okay. In Spanish, even. Hacerte cargo de, de algo. Hacerse cargo de algo. Okay. Um, yeah. Have the control of something. Okay, I like that. Right, the Spanish is uh, the Spanish definition. Yeah, hacerse cargo de algo. Um, yes, I'm not going to correct your Spanish, but because um, we all make typos, we all make typos. Um, but yes, that's that's spot on. Have a control of something. I like that one as well. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. I'm going to take over. Well, the first one is, I think, what Alejandro was trying to say, yeah, is when, when someone stops doing something and you start doing it, right? I think that's what he was trying to say with hacerse cargo de algo, yeah? Someone is doing something and then you, you take over for that person. Rosa, big point for Rosa. Take control of something. Take control of something. Very good. All right. So to begin something someone else was doing, can you take over watching the baby while I make lunch? So I'm watching the baby now. Can you take over watching the baby? Can you start watching the baby while I make lunch? Good. Ah, yes. Okay. That's what I thought, Alejandro. I thought you were trying to say that one. And... Uh, to take control of something, which uh, Rosa said, which was awesome. Take control of something. The government took over. Well, this was in France. The government took over the distribution of masks to pharmacies. There you go. Uh, thank you, Pedro, for the correction. Um, the government took over the distribution of masks to pharmacies. So the government took control of the distribution of masks yeah they didn't allow the private um sector to distribute masks when they had a big panic in france the government took over the distribution of masks okay they took control take back this is an easy one quick definition take back and maybe alejandro try not to do it in spanish try to do it in english take back Let's see who can be the first one to do the easy one because there is a very, very easy one. Very easy definition of take back. My water. It's a lot of talking. Anybody? Take something back. Take something back. Hmm. Would seem. Nobody is willing to uh, go out on a limb, yeah, to try to tell me the definition. All right, well, let's see if we can help you out there a little bit. Take something back. This is the easy one. To return something you bought to a shop. 
to return something you bought to a shop. Yeah? I don't like this television, or I don't like these trousers, or I don't like this mm, computer. I'm going to take it back, and I want my money. Except something you said was wrong. Yeah, spot on, Rosa. Okay. Very good. All right. Excellent. Yeah, to admit something you said was wrong. Yeah, or to accept it, like she said. Excellent. Rosa, you're two for two. You got the hard ones, not even the easy ones. Those were those were the hard ones. So I have a toaster here. You like my toaster? Nope, it's over there. <laughs> you like my toaster, right? It's not a very special toaster, but it is a toaster. However, mm-mm, I don't like it. I have to take the toaster back. It always burns the toast. Don't want a toaster that burns the toast. I'm going to take it back. And let's see what we got. We got a couple of guys playing football. And the one says, You stink at football. You're horrible. Oh, that wasn't very nice. Oh, I didn't mean that. I take it back. You're a great football player, right? I take it back. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't mean to say that. It wasn't very nice of me to say that. I take it back. It's not easy to take back uh, words or things that you say. It's not. It's not very easy. Yeah, you hurts your pride a little bit. You feel a bit sorry and a bit foolish, but it's very important to be able to take things back when you've hurt other people's feelings or when you say something that you shouldn't have said. I take it back. Then we move on to take down. We're almost through take. Take down. This one's not so easy. Let's see if Rosa can come up with another definition for take down. This one, uh, this one might stump you. Let's see what you got for, for take down. All right. Because I try to do these transitions and they're not so, it's not so easy, eh, to do transitions. It's not so easy. <laughs> Is anybody else out there a YouTuber that uh, knows how to do all this stuff like really easily? I don't know how long it takes to learn the to do this stuff very very well, but phew, there is a lot to it. I mean, this is this is a pretty wrestling maneuver in which an opponent is swiftly brought to the mat from a standing position. Mister Agudo, that sounds very 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 dictionary esque of you. I'm wondering if you, that that sounds very good. That's a spot on uh, definition of a takedown, yeah? To take someone down, yeah? It doesn't have to be wrestling. I guess it could be in judo or whatever, but okay. Uh, very good, Pedro, yeah? To destroy something and it falls. To destroy something and it falls. Okay, um, yeah, absolutely. I like I like the idea that you said like to fall, yeah, because you get this fall f with the down. Okay, um, to destroy something, although, yeah, okay. Well, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look because there are a couple of things that we can pick apart here. All right. Um, So, firstly, to write down information. That's an easy one. Yeah? You should be taking this you should be taking this down. You should be taking this down because it's very important. For example, um I keep clicking the wrong thing. To move from a high position to a low position. All right? So, that's very simple. Um, to move from a high position, to move something from a high position to a low position, to disassemble a structure piece by piece. 
So, um, hit someone and throw in the towel. To hit Sacha. To hit someone and throw in the towel. I like the expression throw in the towel. Mm, I'm not too sure about... Hang on, I want to see. I'm not too sure what you mean by to hit someone and throw in the towel because here's an interesting thing. Let's say in boxing, okay? When you hit someone, that person is going to go down and they might throw in the towel... Because to throw in the towel, remember, means to give up, to quit. Like I surrender. I'm I throw in the I'm throwing in the towel. And that's where it comes from. It's a boxing metaphor. Um, to throw in the towel. You can say that about anything. Yeah. Um, this phrasal verbs are too difficult. I'm throwing in the towel. Pfft, I can't do it. Um, it's a boxing metaphor. But hitting someone and throwing in the towel. Yeah. That that's what I. Th- you would be you would be taking them down with a punch and they would throw in the towel or their their corner would throw in the towel you wouldn't hit them and then throw in the towel because you would hit them and then you would give up <laughs> and then, then that that doesn't make much sense to hit somebody in boxing not in the real life to hit somebody in a boxing ring and then they fall down you take them down and uh and then you throw in the towel. I hope I explained the uh, the throw in the towel thing. All right. Uh, write down information. Okay. It's important you take down these phrasal verbs so that you can study them. It's important you take these down. All right. Take these down. Um, to move something from a higher position to a lower position. And here we've got our bags. Um, we've already taken the bags down to the car from the hotel room. So imagine your hotel room is on the fifth floor or the fourth floor or any floor that's higher than ground floor, and you have to take them down to the car. Okay? So this is more literal. And here I have a Christmas tree because, well... And I think this is close to what Rosa was saying um, about destroying something and it falls because you don't have to destroy it. It's more of like disassembling it. It's kind of like taking apart. Yeah, so you can take something apart, which just means to disassemble it. Like, so let's say you're the reverse of ikea furniture yeah you have an ikea bookshelf and you want to take it apart um but you can also say i'm going to take it down and then i'm going to put it into storage all right that you don't want it there anymore so every year my christmas tree and i assume a lot of people who have christmas trees my christmas tree is not a real tree so we have to put it up every year and then when christmas is over we have to take it down so um, every year we take it down, but unlike what Rosa said, we're not destroying it, okay? We're, we're taking it down, we're disassembling it, putting it in the box, and then we're going to put it up in, um, in the storage or wherever, wherever it goes. So to take it down, you can take down a building, Okay, and yeah, you're destroying the building, but the idea of taking it down is sort of like little by little, all right? It's the idea of to, to taking it, take, more like, this. it's like taking it apart, disassembling it, but in this case, obviously, you're not disassembling it. You are destroying it, okay? So be careful with that, but it's to take it apart and bring it down sort of at the same time. Take it down, but can you take down a wall with a breaking ball? Can you take down a wall with a breaking with a breaking ball? Yeah. Okay. So you, I get. I think what you what you mean is, um, let's see if I can. I think what you're saying, Rosa, is can you with the balls that they swing on the crane? I imagine, and they boom, they hit a wall, and we're, yeah. Um, 
Yes and no. Okay, so absolutely. Remember that a lot of a lot of when to use the vocabulary depends on your perspective of the situation. So let me give you an idea or let me give you a perspective of Rosa when she says that we're going to we're going to take down a wall. Okay, so there's a wall and it's in the way. O sea, it's it's bothering us. It's an obstacle. We don't want it there. Obviously, when you construct a wall, you put the wall up so the opposite of up is down and you need to take it down absolutely 100% now if i'm the engineer or if i'm the person who is looking at this obstacle i say okay we have to take that wall down because i want to put a road or a train track or something here Now let's assume that we are the person who is actually going to drive the tractor, who is going to hit the wall and start destroying the wall. I don't know if he's taking it down. You can say he's taking it down, but I would use knockdown. Yeah, knock is like golpear, yeah? Knock is to to well, like to knock on the table or to knock on the door. So he's knocking the wall down with the ball. Okay, um, I think that's probably what he would be saying. Yeah, I'm going to knock this wall down. In your house, in your house, if you have a wall that is separating two rooms and you want to put the two rooms together, you can take down the wall and you can knock down the wall. Both are acceptable and both mean the same thing. Okay, it's a good question, uh, Rosa. And I think that at the end of the day, people will use what they feel more comfortable with when it comes to take down and knock down. But yes, you're right. Um, uh, depending on the point of view, you can take down the wall with a breaking ball. And it's not a breaking ball, actually. It's called a wrecking ball, in fact. Um, wreck is W-R... Actually, I have, I, have a, I have a whiteboard behind me. Um... Here we go. A wrecking ball. A wrecking ball. Oh, I can't get out of the way. Okay. Um, let me know if you can see this. If it's too, if it's too, uh, if it's too light, if you can't see it, I can try to write bigger. I don't have much, uh, much different, mar many different markers, but you can let me know if you can, uh, See it, yeah, Pedro says yes, you can see it. Okay, so a wrecking ball are these giant balls that you see them swinging into buildings and walls and things like that. And it comes from the verb to wreck, which is a synonym for destroy, okay? To wreck something is to destroy it or to break it. Okay, so it is a breaking ball, but we say the, the collocation is it's a wrecking ball, all right? Good, thank you, Rosa and Irene. Uh, for letting me know that. Okay, so now I'm going to stick my head right in front of it, okay? I didn't anticipate writing on the board, but I didn't anticipate um, having to write. Thank you for that. I'm going to have to take that into consideration now when I prepare next week's. Where do I write? Take down. Okay, so I took down my tree, usually in December. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Okay. Next. Take in. All right. Quick definition of take in. This one's not so easy. This one is not so easy. This that we don't. It's not something that you read or see every day in in the B one and B two material. Um, take in. Who can give me a definition of take in? I, I'm going to bet Rosa. If I have to put like a euro on this, I'm going to say Rosa. See who can get the first one to give me a definition of take in. Hmm. This is kind of fun. Although I prefer being in class because I like talking to people. I like talking to Mr. Mir and... Sergio and Mr. Barat and Rosa and Irene, they have Isabel. You guys are all fun. 
If you take someone in, you allow them to stay in your house. Pedro, awesome. Okay, that's very good. Um, my question to you, Pedro, is, well, if your grandmother comes to stay at your house, are you taking her in? That's, that's a question. Are you taking her in? <laughs> Pedro, if you, if you say, hey, Grandma, come and stay with us for a weekend or the night or whatever, are you taking her in? Let's see what Pedro has said. I have to get used to the to the latency, yeah, because I think everybody is like 10 seconds behind me. And it's an awkward sort of situation to get used to. <laughs> I like what Pedro said about taking someone in. You let them stay with you. I wonder if he... He thinks so, yes. Okay, so I think yes. We don't say that, Pedro. I think so. Um, all right, so let's see if Pedro is on on track here. All right, that sounds good. Uh, to let someone stay at your house. To let someone stay at your house. That, that is exactly what Pedro was saying. However, um, we got another information or another definition. To understand and remember information, and I think Rosa said to accept something. Hmm... I'm not sure about that one, Rosa. Mm, not really to take some. So here we go. Here's our cat. This does not look like a very nice cat. He doesn't look like a very happy cat or a very soft cat or a very nice cat. But you want to let this person or this cat or this thing stay at your house because they have nowhere else to go. So when you take somebody in or when you take some animal in, it's usually because it's the last option they have. It's the last option that they have. So you really, you would not say, um, I'm going to take in my grandmother this weekend and she's going to, and we're going to have lots of fun, and we're going to see lots of things. No, because that would mean that your, it would sound to a native speaker that your grandmother, that's a stray cat, absolutely, very good. Um, in fact, you got my, you got my, uh, my example. So yeah, she took in a stray cat she found on the street. So you take it in because it has no other option, okay? So you really would not take in your grandmother, but you could take in, um, you know, a refugee, you could take in a stray, a stray cat, you could take in um, a family member who, I don't know, lost their house or, you know, they had a fire or something and they have no money. So you, yeah, you take them in, okay? Or in a natural disaster, if somebody loses their house and people need um, a place to stay, they need shelter and you take them in. So it's to let someone stay at your house because they have nowhere else to go. Very good word, Sacha. Stray cat. That Not many people know that. Very good. All right. So we can now, we can move off of take and move on to bring. All right. We're, uh, we're about a third of the way there. I don't think we're going to get to the two hours, which is fine. Okay. I mean, two hours is a very long time. Very long time, but uh, I'm more than willing to do it if you guys if you guys stick with me. So bring, bring down, bring through, bring back, bring in, bring over, and bring up. Okay, some of these are easy. Some of them are going to be more difficult. Um, but let's take a look at bring up. Let's see what we got. Anybody? Quick definition of bring up? You know, worry. Okay. Anybody have a quick definition of bring up? There are a couple, a couple easy definitions. There's, there's one that the, my B2, uh, my first certificate kids should know. You guys should know this. Bring up. I hope everybody is staying 
home healthy and washing your hands and all that good stuff. Um, bring up. That brings up a good point. Ooh, I brought up a good point. You see how I did that? That's a good clue. Ooh, Pedro, again with the Spanish. I think you, were you my Spanish guy from before or was that Alejandro? I don't remember. No Spanish. Let's try to keep this. Who was my Spanish guy before? Aleja Alejandro was. Right. Sacar un tema. Sacar un tema. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Okay, that is definitely a good Spanish definition or Spanish translation of, yeah, of... There you go. Rosa's got this one. Take care of someone that is growing up. So, um... It's like saying something when you talk to your friends, but it has nothing to do with the previous conversation. <laughs> um, saying something when you talk to your friends, but it has nothing to do with the previous conversation. Um, Sacha, I like what you're. I like what you're saying. The idea is good. I don't know if you necessarily need the second part. Yeah, it's saying something when you talk to your friends. Absolutely, and this is what I have on the screen right now. It's to mention something. Just to say something, to talk about a topic. Um, nothing to do with the previous conversation. Not really involved. Okay, that's too much. Um, to mention something. Uh, to raise a child until the adulthood, which is what Rosa said. You had to take care of someone that is growing up. Absolutely. And um, here's, an, here's one that you may not know. To make something appear on a screen. Okay. So I'm going to bring up the next slide. Boom. It's a picture of an airplane. I'll do it again. I'm going to bring up a picture of an airplane. Boom. There it is. Okay. So to mention something, and this is what um, Pedro was trying to say. Why do you always bring up my fear of flying? Why do you always mention it? Why do you always talk about it when I'm talking with friends or whatever? Why do you bring it up? And... What Sacha was saying, maybe it has nothing to do with the conversation, but maybe they're talking about flying and everybody's afraid and you say, oh, you're afraid as well, aren't you? Yeah, why, why do you have to bring it up now? Why do you have to mention it? That's good, though. Take care of her. Okay. Here we got my teenager. I like that. To raise and influence a child in, until adulthood, take care of someone. She was brought up to always respect her elders, okay? Her education from her parents or grandparents or whoever is bringing her up uh, taught her to respect her elders. She was brought up to always respect her elders. Um, you know, I didn't mention at the beginning, but if anybody has any questions or uh, comment or doubt about any of the vocabulary, um, just drop it in the chat, okay? And I'll try to answer it as, as, as fast as I can. And here's the last one. Here's a list from the computer and to make something appear on the screen. And my, my example, can you bring up the list of assignments again, please? Can you bring it up on the screen? Can you bring it up so I can see it again? So bring up, this one might be new for some of you, yeah? It might be new. If you have a very old computer, it's very frustrating to bring up images and especially to bring up uh, very big programs like, uh, I don't know, editing, video editing or music editing software it can be very difficult to bring those things up if, uh, if you have an old computer. Bring in. Let's move on. What do we got? So bring in. What's adulthood? Good question. Adulthood is the time of your life 
when you are no longer an adult, okay? So you've got um, childhood and adulthood. And it just means that you're talking about the time when you're a child and the time when you're an adult, okay? And it's a noun that describes that entire time. So I remember in my childhood, I would play in the forest or I used to play in the forest when I was a child in my childhood. In my adulthood, I don't really play in the forest anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, more than 18 years old. If you want to be specific about age, then you would say um, a minor would be under 18, okay, and an adult would be over 18. But adulthood is that entire time, okay, so... That's what that is. Good question. Very good question. I have to, there we go. Bring in. Bring in. So we had literally, you can bring like with you, you're carrying it, bring something into a room. That's literal. Uh, do you have, do we know any other meanings for bring in? What do you got for me, Rosa? Ha! <laughs> Attract something or someone. Mm. I'm trying to think. Attract someone. Attract someone. Okay. Attract. That's interesting. I wish I wish I could talk to you right now and kind of like pick your brain to see what you're what exactly you're thinking because I like the way you're going. I like the track that you're on. Um, I'm just not a hundred percent sure. Attract someone or something. You mean like to? You mean like gravity? Could be like gravity. Yeah, I mean, I guess. The Earth is bringing the asteroid closer because of gravity. I think it would be a stretch, but to attract something. Let's have a look. To ask someone to be involved in a conversation. This one you don't usually, um, we haven't seen very much. So this is a good one for you to, to, to take down. Ask someone to be involved in a conversation. To earn a certain amount of money. Uh, it doesn't have to be working. It can be by selling something and to attract customers. Now here is bring in cake. Bring in cake. I like cake. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by bring in cake. Bring in cake. Well, if it's my birthday and I'm sitting here and you're out there, I want you to bring in my cake. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I don't know, maybe Sacha, you can give me a little bit more to to go on. <laughs> That's that's funny. Okay, Rosa says, yes, gravity. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, I wasn't thinking about gravity. I mean, I was because I gave you the example. But um, when I have here to attract customers, um, you're trying to bring them closer by offering them something, all right? And here we have to ask someone to be involved in a conversation. So when I don't know the answers, I will bring in somebody who can help me find the answers. Yeah, I'd like to bring in a climate expert so we can know her opinion on the topic. So I can speak and speak and speak and speak about the climate, but until Asta, until I bring in a climate expert, uh, it's really just my opinion. Yeah, we're not talking about fact or anything objective. So you bring someone in to talk about something. It's kind of like invite. You invite them to the conversation. <laughs> 
to earn a certain amount of money, all right? And this can be from your job. So a lawyer brings in more money than a teacher most of the time. Um, a doctor brings in more money than a waitress almost all of the time. Okay, so to bring in can be from your work or it could be in a fundraiser. So for example, the fundraiser brought in about 5,000 euros to the foundation. A fundraiser is a, an, an event that you, you have to ask people to donate to the foundation that you're representing. Okay, so if it's cancer or if it's uh, HIV or, for example, now with the virus in the world, some people are having fundraisers, musicians and actors and actresses, famous people will play concert to raise money, to, to bring in money uh, to help with this uh, problem. So to bring in money. And finally, the, the one that Rosa said about attracting something or someone, I, I like what she said, to attract customers. So the back-to-school sales brought in a lot of people to the mall this weekend. Why did they go to the mall? Because of the sales. So they were attracted by the sales. And I think what Rosa was trying to say also was this, that... There is something that people want, I make an offer, and I bring in the people, okay? Or the offer brings in the people, really. I mean, why do the people, not because of me, the people don't come because of me, they come because of the offer, the 10% or whatever, okay? If you have any questions, shoot them out. That's the last one for bring in. Oh, here we go. We have to applaud the medical workers and the police for the coronavirus. Yes, we do. I definitely am not going to say they no. So there you go. There's my applause. Get it out of the way. I was hoping, fingers crossed, I was hoping to go for some time of low stress, low impact, uh, news uh, free zone area. But I do admit, I did include some of my examples were uh, current affairs. Thank you, Sacha, for mentioning that. And if anybody's mom, dad, uncle, aunt, cousin, or friend is a doctor or nurse, tell them thank you from me. Oh, it's 8 o'clock. That's why we have to applaud. I just got that. Sacha, spot on. Woo! Woo! You can take uh, two minutes out if you want to go to the balcony and everybody can scream for the nurses and doctors. That would be fine. I'm going to continue because I have to. <laughs> but I did applaud. All right. Um, bring, oh, you can't see it very well. Bring through is what we're going to do next so bring through this is this is not an, an easy one it's not one that we use very often but I have seen it I have seen it used I have seen it um, in texts um, but you have the idea of going th through again through going through a difficult time and to get through the difficult time, you need someone that can help you. They can bring you through. So you can imagine if it was physical and they brought you through, let's say, the house was on fire and the fireman brought you through the house, like you're going through the house to get outside, you can imagine that. But if it's mental, you can't really see the the physical moving of bringing someone through a difficult time but if um it, your parents are there to bring you through many of life's problems to bring you they help you in difficult times to get to the end of the problem and 
to uh, to mention Sacha again. Uh, the nurses and doctors are definitely bringing us through this uh, pandemic. Okay, they are definitely bringing society through this pandemic, and we will get through the pandemic. Okay, so nobody has to um, nobody has to worry too too much because we. I mean, we have to worry, but not too too much. Does that make sense? We have to worry, but not worry too much. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Bring back. I forgot to ask you the definition of this one, but we're going to just go with it. To reintroduce or use something again. To return someone to where you picked them up. Now, that's a good one. That's the opposite of uh, pick up. Or you, you, know, you pick them up and you take them somewhere. You bring them back. And to take back, which is sort of the same as to return. But, uh, yeah. Ooh, school uniform. To reintroduce or use something again. The school wants to bring back uniforms. But I think it's a bad idea. The school wants to bring back uniforms. I don't think anybody wants to bring back uniforms once they're gone. Bring back. I mean, literally, it can be bring it back. Like if somebody takes something from you, your phone, and they run away, you bring my phone back. But not here. To return someone to where you picked them up, or to yeah, to take back and bring back is the same. When you're done with your homework, I'll bring you back to your friend's house. So you're at your friend's house, and you're playing PlayStation, and your mom says, you have to be home, you have to do your homework, you have to help your sister or your brother or whatever. When you finish, I'll bring you back to your friend's house. Okay, in the car. I'll bring you back. Which is almost literal as well. And the other one I'm not going to do, the uh, take back, number three here, because it means the same, I think, with, um, yeah, take back when you're talking about uh, something to a store. I'm going to take back the... Uh, Bring back memories. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Irene made a very good point. Um, bring back memories. Absolutely. Um, so if you smell something that reminds you of a time, another time, or a summer, or an old boyfriend, or an old girlfriend, or um, a house, or a place that you visited often, yeah, you oh, yeah. That brings me back to when blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. That's good. Very good, Irene. Um, that actually brings another very important point that Irene is making. The list I'm giving you right now, this is not exhaustive. Okay? This is not um, – This these are not all of the definitions that – are used even for the participles that we're looking at, or the, the particles that we're looking at, not participles, particles. We're looking at only six of the lists that I showed you at the beginning, and of these six, I'm only giving you like one, two, or three definitions of the phrasal verb. Yeah, sometimes, like Irene has just pointed out to us, um, they have even more um more definitions, okay? I'm giving you the ones that I think you should know, like you should have them under your thumb. Uh, that's an expression in English, to know them by memory, to have them ready to use all the time. Under your thumb. You should have them under your thumb. You should have them ready to go. And um, yeah, but good point, Irene. Uh, bring back memories. Absolutely, very good. Bring down. Bring down. Who can give me a quick one of bring down? I think bring down, 
Yeah, there are a couple. There's one or two, there are one or two that um could be quite easy. Somebody from the B two, come on, Rosa. You haven't said anything in a while. <laughs> I get a drink of water. I'll throw the water all over myself. That was a bit embarrassing. So, bring down. Literally, to reduce or to lower, okay, to... All right. Usually by force. Or to force a government to close. All right. So, if you have a fever, if you have a high temperature, high temperature, and you want to bring it down, what do you do? You can take some paracetamol. The thing you said before about takedown. With a wrecking ball. To destroy something, do you mean, Rosa? Thing is with the uh <laughs> I'll get used to the to the timing of this, but um bring it down. Yeah. But not the wall. Yeah, okay. Um no, not the wall. I think it was better take down. Okay. You you get a bit of freedom when you speak English, because you can say, oh, like, we have to bring this wall down. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, and nobody would even think twice about correcting you. It's not in, it's not incorrect, but um, I don't know if we would use bring down as much as take down um, in, that, in that sense, okay? Um, so, yeah, bring down... Um, Take down, bring down. Well, now it's getting to be more complicated. I think if you think about something that's solid, something that's solid like a, a tree, okay, you could bring the tree down because it's all one piece. And remember, take down was more like to disassemble it, to take it apart while you're bringing it down. <laughs> yeah, notice I used bring down. Um, so I think if it's solid, yeah, I could see you saying, bring it down. In fact, with trees, I would say, bring it down. We have to bring this tree down. You would not say, I have to take this tree down. Okay. Now that I said it, it sounds okay. <laughs> Let's just say that they're very, very close to being synonyms. Yeah. People can bring down, he was happy, and then he brought down. Okay, no, so, all right, good, Irene. Um, it's passive, right? So people can be brought down, yeah? People can be brought down by sad news, by bad news. Um, if the thing disappears. Let me talk about Irene, and then we'll go to Alejandro. So people can be brought down, yeah? You can be you can be brought into a bad mood or into a sad mood, um, but you don't. You need an object, Irene. So people can bring down the crowd, for example. Yeah, the 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 multitude of of people by making people sad. But usually, it's going to be passive. Yeah, I was brought down by um, the sad news. Now, Alejandro, Alejandro says, but if the thing disappears, I guess I don't know what thing you're talking about, Alejandro. Maybe you can tell me what thing you're talking about. If the thing disappears, you mean like, like in my tree example, if the tree disappears or in Rosa's wall example? I'm not too sure about that one. Well, I mean, if if Alejandro, if you mean, like, for example, in my example, to bring down your fever, 
Yeah, if you take paracetamol, then the fever disappears. Yeah. Okay. The paracetamol will bring down the fever and it'll disappear. The tree doesn't disappear. I mean, if you bring the tree down, it's like now it's down on the ground. Okay. You bring it down. It's standing up and you bring it down. Okay. But it's, it's one solid piece. All right. I think that's what I would say about that. Um, the wall, again, I would say that the wall would be better. You take down the wall. Okay. Good questions. I'm really glad that you guys are asking me questions. Yeah, I'm really happy about this. Um, and then bringing down a government, which is what I, yes, the fever drops down suddenly. Yes, absolutely. Good, Alejandro. Yep. Um, to force a government to close or to change or, yeah, if, if there's no confidence in the government, um, you know, if lots of people are not happy with the government, they can bring down the government. Okay. Now, if you're talking about Brexit, obviously the United Kingdom was not going to collapse into anarchy. But if you have a, a coup d'etat, for example, in wherever, uh, any, in Ukraine there was a coup d'etat, in Venezuela there were several attempts at coup d'etats. Well, uh, Chavez was a coup d'etat, I think. Um uh, well, here in Spain, you had uh, when Franco tried to take over the or took over the government of Spain, he took down the existing government. He brought the existing government down. So take down and bring down. Here, I'm using the I'm using them again uh, synonymously. I don't know if you picked up on that, but he took down the government. He brought the government down. Okay, so Brexit almost brought down the UK political system. Not into anarchy, but certainly um, almost brought down the, the government that was in power. Okay. Um, I gave you this one because it's very specific, bring down a government. But at the B2 level, a lot of times they're going to ask you sort of about geopolitical questions or, or like sort of the geopolitics. They don't expect you to know geopolitics. But they may talk about Brexit or a coup d'etat or the history of whatever whatever country. Um, no, it's not like a motin. Yeah, motin is riot. Okay, a riot, R-I-O-T. Um, and a riot, if it's a small riot, usually it's yeah breaking some windows or stealing some things and lighting containers on fire and 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 bins but if it's big enough if it's a big enough riot then yeah it can bring down the government and the first one that comes to my mind is if you think about the french revolution and you know if anybody likes musicals and les miserables um los miserables uh, it's all about a riot and how they bring down or try to bring down uh, the government ultimately not really succeeding, but that's what happened. Yeah, they brought down the government. So be careful with the word motin, Alejandro. Yeah, that's uh, un golpe de estado. That's what I said, coup d'état. In English, we use the French. Um, we use the French word coup d'état. But many times. Many times we just say coup, yeah? If there was a, a coup attempt or there was a coup in this country or da 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 um, we use the French word for golpe de estado, uh, coup d'etat. So you can use that. And, and yeah, it's written exactly like this in English, okay? Um, and... With the with the apostrophe and and everything like that, okay. Um, do I recommend watching series and movies in English? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Sacha, that's a very good question. Um, I recommend watching series and movies. What's more is I recommend watching series and movies um, with subtitles if they have literal subtitles, literal subtitles. Okay, they're not paraphrasing what's being said it is literally what is coming out of their mouth then it's good 
because you will match the words with the with the speech. If the subtitles, you don't see anything. Oh shoot! Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay, hold on. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for telling me. You see, I didn't I didn't catch the transition there. Um, coup d'état, as I was saying before. We use the French coup d'état. Um, as I was saying about the subtitles, if the subtitles are literal, then yes. If it's paraphrased, no, because you won't match the the lo the vocals with uh, in English subtitles in English. Yeah, uh, unless you're le you're if your level of English is very 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 low, then you watch it in Spanish and you listen to it in English. Uh, listen to it in English and read it in Spanish and you'll be fine, okay? That's how you start, but it's not ideal. Once you get confident and comfortable, then you watch it in English subtitles and eventually without subtitles, okay? Um, it helps to watch the film first in Spanish so that you've seen it and then watch it again in English but with no subtitles. But what's more important than um, what's more important than watching series or films? And I know that my B two class knows this, and every class that I ever teach, um, that I've ever taught, knows this. What's more important than watching films and series in English? See who will see who will be the first one to answer. Let's see if my uh... somebody. What's more important than watching films? Mm. No, <laughs> classes. All right. Um, no, classes are not. They're very good. I'm not going to say classes are bad. Classes with me. See this video. Nice. No. <laughs> um, very different purposes. Very different ends watching this video and watching a series. No, not talking in English, neither. No. Yes, Irene. Yay. Irene wins the prize. Read. You must read. Read, 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 read. Okay. Any exposure. Any time that you do anything in the language is very, very, very important, okay? Um, listening to music, watching films, watching series, talking to friends, chatting online, um, anything, playing video games, anything that's in English is going to help you improve because it's repetition and, and it's good. But reading, reading is going to challenge you it's going to be difficult. You're going to get vocabulary. And in your mind's eye, yeah, you are, you're getting used to seeing the words and hearing the words and, and relating the words together. Okay. Read, read, read. I don't care what it is. Magazines, books, pamphlets, Wikipedia, uh, the news, anything you want, but read. Okay. Um, gonna go back here. We gotta finish this up. We're almost done. Bring down the government. Good questions. Bring over. To take someone or something to the place where someone is. I'll bring my laptop over to your house so we can edit the video together. So to bring over, yeah, to take it with you to some place, usually to a person. Yeah, I'll bring it over to your house or I'll bring it to the park or I'll bring my camera uh, on uh, over to uh, your house and we can make lots of Instagram pictures or something. Yeah, to bring over. No, Sacha, it's not an order. 
Yeah, you're, it, I mean, well, I mean, it can be if it's an imperative. Yeah, bring it over here now. Then it's an order. But the verb does not make it an order. It's the, it's the tense. If it's an imperative, then yeah, it's an order. But any verb can be an order. Okay, so to, if you, you, your little brother or little sister takes your phone and you say, hey, bring that over here right now. You can't see me. Yeah, if they take your thing, you say, bring it here, bring it over here right now. Then it's an order, but not usually. Okay, it doesn't, bring over doesn't mean that it's an order. Last one, and then we're done. Come. And again, we're going to use the same particles. Come down, come through, come back, come in, come over, and come up. All right, shoot me a definition. Come up. Shoot me a definition. We'll see you. See what you guys got. Shoot me a definition of come up and we'll see how you guys are doing. I think next week I'm going to try to um, do some videos. Yeah, apart from the live because I think the videos can be shorter more to the point. A thing that is here at school, we speak Valencian second language in England. Do they have a second language at school? Okay, Sacha. Um, good question. I really would like to get through the phrasal verbs and then you can ask me lots of questions. That's not a problem. Uh, go up somewhere. So can we come back to that question, Sacha? Uh, Rosa, go up somewhere. Yeah, literally. Like if, if I'm at the top and you're at the bottom, I say, hey, come up here. Yeah, okay. It can just mean to, to get closer to someone uh, to talk to them. All right. Like a car. Go up somewhere like a car? Like go up the mountain? No. Come. Not sure, Rosa, you might have to give me, can you, can you put it in a sentence and, and maybe I can see the example you're thinking of? A subject starts to be talked about and come up with, we create or we invent something or an idea. So we've got these three. Subirse, ah, subirse al coche. You mean like to get in the car? Like to get in the car to go on a trip or something or to drive? I think so. Well, here's the first one. To get closer, yeah, okay. So if you meant that, then no. So Rosa, um, subir al coche is to get into the car. Get in the car, yeah? Remember, you get in the car, but you get on a bus, you get on a boat, you get on a plane, you get on a train, but you get in a car or you get in a taxi. You get on a bike, you get on a horse. Basically, you get on everything. Except for a car, you get in. Or a truck, you get in the truck. Okay. To get closer to someone to talk. I was so nervous when she came up to me and asked me my name. Ooh. She came up to me. So she got closer to me because she wanted to talk to me. So I was so nervous when she came up to me and asked me my name. So to come up to someone is to get closer. So it's not a good idea 
if some to come up to anybody or to go up to anybody. If someone comes up to you now, I mean, take a step back, right? You need to keep one meter distance. That's what they say. When a subject starts to be talked about, this is similar to bring up. Right, We were talking about our futures when all of a sudden jobs came up. I have no idea what I want to do. So we were talking and then the conversation sh shifted to jobs. We started talking about jobs. Uh, it, it came up. Yeah. It's like su 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 I'm going to just stick to English. Can't do the Spanish. I've been speaking too much English. It just came up out of nowhere. <laughs> or someone brought up the topic of jobs. Yeah, remember we did bring up. So bring up and come up can be very similar to this. Thank you, Sergio. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, come up. Come up with, to create or to invent something. Uh, no one has the answer, so you will have to come up with something by yourself. Come up with. This one we should know. Everybody should know this, hands down. Okay, this one, definitely you have to know this one. This is easy. Let's do come over. To visit someone's house, to go where that someone is. So to come over someone. Now this one is this one is not easy. This one, um, I like it a lot, but it's not one that you see very often, and the, and I think it's very good to know. Um, when something comes over you. Yeah, you experience a, a strong feeling. That's what I said. Surgio, Sacha, ha ha ha. Very good. Okay, Pedro. Um, good night. Um, have a good one, and thank you for coming. So when you have a feeling come over you, it's sudden and it's strong. Okay. To visit someone's house. Can you come over later and we can hang out? Yeah, just come over and visit me at my house. That one's easy. Now, this is the one I want to look at. When a strong feeling comes over you. Why are you shouting? Why are you shouting? Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. I don't know what came over me. I highlighted the wrong word. <laughs> it should be came over. And I did came over me came me but the word is come over i don't know what came over me i don't know i just all of a sudden i i was uh, very angry and i screamed and i'm sorry i don't know what came over me um or when i heard the news when i heard the news a feeling of sadness came over me i felt sad instantly okay to come over someone. Make sure you have the someone there. Came over me. We're almost done. We got like three more. Come in. We have the literal come in, like come into the room. But it also means to arrive. And not many people know this. Okay. It, to arrive for a ship or a plane or a train when talking about a timetable. A timetable, yeah? What time does the plane arrive? What time does the ship arrive? Money or information. And uh, to enter in a plan or a process. So these are three ways that we can use come in. You should take this down. I like using that over and over again. Take down, take down. So to arrive for a ship or a plane, their plane comes in at 8 o'clock. Their plane arrives at 8 o'clock. Their plane gets here at 8 o'clock. So come in, in this sense, means arrive. Their plane arrives or their plane comes in at 8 o'clock. So we'd better be there a little earlier. 
Uh oh. Here's the virus. He's coming to get us. Reports are coming in from all over the planet that there is a major global epidemic. Well, I think they're calling it a pandemic now, but there is a major global pandemic. Reports are coming in. So I'm receiving information. I'm getting information. Information is coming in from here. It's coming in from here. It's coming in from here. All right. Um, yeah. And the same, you can talk the same about money. You can say the same about money. I've got money coming in from my job. I've got money coming in from my birthday. I've got money coming in from wherever, okay? So it's money that is coming, being received. And to enter in a plan or a process. Um, it's more like when a plan or a process uh, becomes relevant. We need to ensure public safety. That's where washing your hands comes in. Okay, so washing your hands enters into the plan, enters into the process when we talk about public safety. Yeah, it's important that we wash your hands, wash our hands. Okay, um, so it enters into the process. We all need to prepare for the English exam. That's where I come in because I can help you, right? That's where I come in, helping you with the exam. All right. Come through. Finishing up. Survive. Survive and a process to be finalized and made official. Okay, so let's see. Oh, we got our friends here in the boat. One is going to come through this and the other one is not. To survive, it's been a difficult month, but we'll come through and be better for it. Okay, so sometimes people will say, we can get through this and we can come through this or we will come through this. Ooh, and there, oh, I think those are the old passports. I'm not sure, though. A process to be finalized and made official. We had to wait nearly four weeks for the passports to come through. So to go through all of the bureaucracy, to go through all of the paperwork, and to wait and to wait, and finally it came through. So it goes in, goes through, and comes out. Four weeks Passports to come through. Come back. All right, your turn. Last time I'm going to ask you. Give me some definitions. Give me some definitions of come back, and then we're going to wrap up with, I think we have one or two more. Good, Alejandro, return. But be careful because return can mean a couple of different things, but I, I know what you mean. So yeah, return. Anything else? It's like going back to a place. That's it, good, Sacha. I like that one a lot. So if we combine Alejandro and Sacha's uh, answer, yeah, um okay bye bye oh i didn't see you maria sorry uh bye maria um thank you for coming if we combine alejandro and uh sacha so we could return to a place yeah return to a place and absolutely return to a place yeah to go back to a place to return good night and if something comes back it's becoming fashionable again. And similar to what Irene said at the beginning about bring back memories, come back um, can also be a, to remember, okay? And let me, let me show you. 
Also, it can be used for return something. Mm, to return something. What do you mean? Like to a store? To a shop? Like I don't like my socks? And you want to return them to the store? Or can you use it in a sentence maybe, Alejandro, and how you're thinking? And maybe I can help you with that. Yeah, try to use it in a sentence. Um, come back to return to a place. Uh, to return to a place that you're in, that you're at. Yeah, this is the difference between go back and come back, right? This place is amazing where I'm at right now. A thing that you like, but it has gone. Ah, and you want it again. Okay. Alejandro. I'll get to that right now. Yes, very good. Um, so this place is amazing. I hope we can come back someday soon. I'm here right now. I want to come back here again. Let me shoot over to Alejandro. Yes, okay. So if something has gone and you want it to return or you're thinking about it to uh, returning, then yeah, absolutely. It would come back. And the first thing that comes to my mind is a boomerang yeah when you throw a boomerang it goes out and it comes back all right good alejandro yeah absolutely so when something goes out and it returns it comes back to you okay very good thank you you see using it in a sentence or, or explaining it a little bit more uh that helps a lot Ooh, come back and here we've got scrunchies I know about scrunchies because my daughters have like a bazillion scrunchies, I think. Yeah, tons of scrunchies. Um, to become fashionable again. Scrunchies are coming back into fashion. To come back into fashion. Or you could just simply say scrunchies are coming back. Scrunchies are making a comeback. If you want to make the verb a noun a comeback, then you've got that. Um, so to become fashionable again, anybody got scrunchies, anybody, well, girls or boys with long hair, <laughs> boys don't usually wear scrunchies if they have long hair though. And here's the one about remember, okay, that, uh, Irene had mentioned bring back before, which was very good. Come back. I can't think of the name right now, but it'll come back to me in a minute. No. Did I make a mistake, Saj? No. Uh-oh. I don't. Ah, right. Okay, no. <laughs> Saj is saying, no, he doesn't wear scrunchies. That took me a second to, to figure it out. Yeah, I don't. I don't blame you. I don't wear scrunchie either. My daughters wear scrunchies. I can't think of the name right now, but it'll come back to me in a minute. I'll remember in a minute. I'll remember in a minute. Okay, so come back. It doesn't take me to another, um, it, it doesn't remind me, which is what bring back is, remember, Irene? Um, remind me is like bring back, but remember is come back. So that, that's, that's very good, actually. I should have included that one. I should have included that in the, in the, in the class anyway. Come back and bring back for remember and remind. I think we're got two more. Come down to be forced to fall to the ground. And this was what, what we were saying about bring down with the tree and come down. Now the tree is doing it by itself or the wall is by something is forcing it um, unexpectedly. Yeah, it wasn't meant to come down but it's, it's forced to fall to the ground and to become lower and come down with to become ill. And here we have the tree, which I was telling you before. If I want to bring the tree down, then I do it. I connect a rope and I pull and I bring it down. If, however, I wake up and I see in the morning that the tree is on the ground. I say, oh my gosh, the tree came down last night in the storm because of the high winds. It came down last night.
and uh, low prices, the prices of gasoline or petrol are coming down because fewer people are driving. Fewer people are driving, there's less demand, there's more supply, the prices go down. So they're coming down because fewer people are driving. And chickenpox, varicela. Chickenpox, if you become ill with something, my son has come down with the chickenpox. My son has come down with the chickenpox. To come down with. That's a good one as well. To be ill. Come down with coronavirus. Come down with the chickenpox. Come down with the flu. All right. That's it. It's very long. I think two hours might be too long. <laughs> yeah, it's been an hour and 45 minutes. And that's very, very, very long. Uh, thank you very much uh, to everybody for, well, the eight of you that have stayed for most of it or all of it. If you came in late, great. Um, it can be used for chill out someone. Sorry, Alejandro, I just read that. What do you mean uh, it can be used to chill out someone? Let me just back up and see if I can find it. You mean to make someone colder? No. Come down. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I see what you mean. So Alejandro is saying, like, if someone is, like, very hyper and they need to come down, they need to relax, but that's more like calm down, I think, is what you're thinking. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me uh, go back to me full screen and then I'll be done so okay so calm down c-a-l-m yeah okay calm down everyone no right very good Alejandro so it's calm down c-a-l-m calmar yeah calm down and then that's that. So again, thank you. And um, I appreciate everyone sticking around, as I said. Please, um, you know, uh, come back next week. Hopefully I will, uh, w this will all be sorted out and the world will be a much better place. We will see what happens. If you have any questions now, um, I am more than happy to stay for the next 15 minutes and answer questions or just talk or whatever. If not, then I will wish you a good night and see you next week. Okay, so this class is uh, once a week. I will try to post a video on YouTube. Please tell your friends. Tell your family, anybody who wants to learn English, every level, I'm doing every level, so uh, once a week, and it's all free, yeah? It's just uh, your chance to kind of talk with me, and for me to help you keep getting some, <laughs> some vocabulary. So I'll give you another... 10 seconds, right, everybody's saying good night, fantastic. Okay, have a good night, everybody have dinner, and I will see you later.